Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Um, we're going to start out with the first article. Uh, I want to thank my subscribers for uh, coming to my channel. They are just awesome. And I want to welcome everyone else to my channel. And hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like. I appreciate it and it does help my channel grow. Um, I'm going on two months now with this. It's just new to me. So <laughs> I'm hanging in there. Um, PayPal may soon be under a federal investigation and I had an incident with PayPal uh, yesterday I do believe it was and I'll explain about that later uh, over the past several years this country has witnessed a troubling pattern of big tech companies becoming increasingly authoritarian authoritarian social media censorship in one prime example, although it is just the starting point. Earlier this month, PayPal updated its terms of service to state that anyone caught spreading misinformation is subject to having $2,500 withdrawn from their wallets. That's not right. This didn't go over the way PayPal expected. Almost immediately, people started uh, quickly canceling their accounts. Eventually, PayPal came out and said that the notice about upcoming fines were misinformation was made in error, yet few people actually believe this. But there could be a question there, and I'll explain that later. It has since come out that the, the stunt PayPal pulled could lead to the company being under federal investigation. Potential legal problems for PayPal? It turns out that PayPal's notice of misinformation finds upset not just the general public, but also the Consumer Financial Protect Bureau, CFPB. According to CFPB Director Rohit Chopra, what PayPal announced is first he's ever heard of a payment company trying to pull off something like this. <clears throat> Chopra then said a review into whether or not PayPal believes it can fine individuals for lawful activity is appropriate at this time. It remains to be seen if the CFPB director does follow through with any investigation. Despite PayPal walking back its misinformation announcement, many Americans stated they would turn to other digit wallets. Other folks warned that anyone who has their bank accounts linked to PayPal should remove them just to be on the safe side. The case for investigation this is very uh, real likelihood that PayPal blurred or crossed some legal lines which it threatened to find account holders for speech. If PayPal is actually going through with this policy, rather than walking it back, the company would have been in violation of the First Amendment. A federal investigation would ensure PayPal is held accountable in the event the company did overstep its legal bounds. On top of that, it would send a message to other companies that may consider similarly punitive actions against individuals for their speech. Time and time again, what's once deemed as misinformation is later proven to be accurate. If PayPal is able to skate by without at least being appropriately reviewed, then there's truly no telling what may come next. Okay, now that's the end of that little say-so there article. Um, my episode with PayPal, and it's happened three times, and I do think I mentioned this in another video maybe yesterday or the day before. But I would get a thing in my email telling me I bought something. And uh, if I would have clicked on that, somewhere in between going from here back to PayPal or whoever the email was from would probably try to rip my PayPal account off. But here's the clincher. I don't use PayPal. Very, very, very seldom. Years ago. And why? It's because then they ripped me off of some money. Yes, they did. And they had to pay me back, and they did. 
They did give me back my money. Yes, they did. So I called PayPal either yesterday or the day before. Don't quote me on that. But I was on the phone for about, oh, maybe 45 to an hour. And the lady was very nice that I talked to. And uh, I told her, I said, ma'am, I didn't order this. It was a brand new printer. Yeah, brand new. And, and how much was it? 500 and some bucks for a brand new printer. Laser printer. And I said, I didn't order that. And I said, this is the third time that I've been charged for stuff through PayPal I have not ordered. I do not use PayPal. And I kept repeating it over so she got it, you know. And she did. And she was very nice about it. And uh, she took all my information and she said, somehow we are being, uh, what do they call it? hacked really bad. That's what she said. Hackers are doing it. It's not us. And so I gave her the email that the email come from. And she said, ma'am, I'm going to freeze that account right now. Don't you do anything on PayPal right now or your computer till I get this settled. So she settled it. And uh, she said, you wait at least an hour. Give me an hour to go through this. And she said, I am the supervisor. I wrote it all down. I don't know exactly where I put it. Uh... I would like to find it because I would tell you exactly what she said. Uh, she's a supervisor. I was lucky enough to get a supervisor, believe it or not. And uh, the Lord was with me, I do believe. Because somebody else might have just passed it off. And she listened to every word I had to say. Yes, she did. And of course, she was a foreigner, you know, with an accent. So I had to keep saying, what'd you say? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what'd you say? And she was so patient with me. She really was. But there are hackers doing this. So I don't think PayPal, and I hope it's not PayPal, because I know a lot of people that go to PayPal. And I hope and pray that it is not on PayPal's end. The hackers have gotten into PayPal to their accounts. And that's where they're picking up all our names, all our banking information, our home addresses, because they had everything. They had everything on me. Everything. <clears throat> and so I don't I don't want to blame PayPal, you know, until I know more. But it's not PayPal. I think hackers. Because how would they get all my information? And I asked her this. I said how would they get my bank account? And she said, they can hack into anything. We have got numbers and numbers of people that we are protecting right now to our best advantage that are being hacked and told that they bought something they didn't ever purchase. And so she was very honest and upfront. And she said, I'm going to freeze your account. You don't have to worry. You're not going to be billed for nothing. You didn't order it, you're not responsible for it, and you will not be billed for it. And I'm going right now, and give me an hour to process all this, because I suppose she had to go up to somebody above her, you know, like the CEO or whatever. And uh, so she said, give me an hour. Don't touch nothing. So I didn't. I didn't touch a thing. I didn't touch my computer. I didn't click on any other programs. I didn't go to my email. I didn't do nothing. I just got up, did some housework. And in an hour, I came back and sat down. And I haven't heard a word. So don't get too excited. But if you feel safer, and you do have a PayPal account, I would go get a new uh, debit card, credit card, or close them up. For now, if you can, I don't know. I don't have credit cards. Uh, I just got a debit card. Now, I can call my bank and tell them, hey, I need a new uh, debit card. And within a week, I'll have one with new account number on it. And that's probably a good idea, 
even if you've got to wait a couple two or three days to use it till you get your new one do it i think that would probably be a good idea because if they've got my information and numbers and numbers and numbers of all their customers you might be included if anything shows up in your email and tells you that uh, your purchase is ready to be mailed to be delivered don't touch it call paypal immediately yes and take care of it that way that would be a good way to do it but i'm not going to accuse paypal i'm not going to do that i'm going to wait and just keep my eyes open see what i get to read and this time I will read. <laughs> As you know, I don't read a lot of my articles. I just grab them and <laughs> download them and put them up. <laughs> but anyway, uh, just be careful. Be cautious. Watch your email. And if you come up and somebody says you bought something from PayPal, don't touch it. You get on the phone and you call PayPal right now. Good hint. Okay. Mwah. Okay. My throat gets dry when I talk so much. I'm sorry about that. But that's what I had to explain about PayPal. All right, let's find another one here. And uh, let's see. Oh, yes, here's another good one. Yeah. Now, I'll tell you, here's another one that's devastating to me. It really is. The left, which I take... And I can't be sure, but I, I do believe it's the Democrats. Aren't they the leftists? Republicans are the rightest. I wish I was the wealthiest. <laughs> Poet and didn't know it. Huh? <laughs> but the left is milking January 6th for all it's worth. And I do mean they are. Yep. Despite crushing problems that are hurting Americans every single day, the left remains ceaselessly focused on January 6th. In one of the most appalling displays yet, some members of the mainstream media allege that last year's riots at the Capitol were worse than 9-11. There is nothing, nothing worse than 9-11, unless it's war. And you might just as well say that was a war from another country. That was terrible. That's the most horrific thing that... And the school shootings follow. That's been, oh, the children killed, teachers killed. One principal, I even think, got killed in one of them school shootings. Oh, dear Lord. The January 6th committee, meanwhile, continues leading the charge of milking last year's events on Capitol Hill. This involves issuing various subpoenas, subpoenas and holding endless hearings. Conservatives are repeatedly warning that this committee is politically motivated rather than seeking out an honest account of January 6th. As this continues to play out, Utah father Bradley Bokoski, along with his son Matthew Bokoski, are the latest individuals facing charges. Closer look at charges against father and son. Both Bo uh, Bokoskis are charged with picketing, demonstrating, or parading on the grounds of the U.S. Capitol. In the wake of these charges, the father and son both plead guilty, while the the Bokokas the Bokokases are currently free. They'll receive their sentences on Tuesday, January 17th. Video footage shows the father and son barely in the Capitol for even five minutes before they left the premises. Charges against the Bokokskis occurred after law enforcement came across online posts from Matthew about January 6th. This then led to the FBI investigating Matthew and his father before charges were brought against them. Federal overreach. To this day, there are still many January 6th protesters who remain in jail, with no time set for trial. Certain officials now warn this violates these protesters' Sixth Amendment rights, which ensure a trial for defendants that are both speedy and public. The conditions which January 6th protesters are being subjected to behind bars is also cause for concern to many Americans. I mean, they shouldn't have done what they've done. And nobody's saying, you know, that this should have happened because they shouldn't have. We all agree on that. 
They should not have done that. They should have really thought hard about what could happen to them. Well, they're getting a taste. After what they've done, what can happen to them? Ironically, as the FBI makes it their business to go after anyone who was even mildly involved in January 6th, the document crimes committed by Hunter Biden continues to be swept under the rug. Now, January 6th is over with. The people are in jail. They're waiting trial for the judge to hear their case. They've got lawyers working for them. So why forget about Hunter Biden when he's making deals with China and whatever other country that's against the United States of America? We're not important to anybody anymore, are we? Only to ourselves. Mm. At this point, there's established evidence of Hunter lying while trying to purchase a gun. I've been through that in two videos now. Breaking tax laws, receiving payments from Russian oligarch while his dad was vice president. If the FBI would even put a fraction of effort in directing toward January 6th protesters into Hunter Biden and his father, I'm going to add, even as vice president, the agency might garner just a little bit more trust and respect from Americans. You know? <clears throat> These people that went to January 6th, I can't say was right about anything and I know that they know now that they wasn't either they should not have done what they done but it just they knew and I know from just a gut feeling that they knew something was not right that Biden got the vote for presidency because look at where we're at now you know, they had to have some idea. And they just lost it. They went ballistic. And it's, it's just like, you know, everything now is in such chaos. I'm using that word again, chaos. I've seen other people use it in the same thing. You know, how did we get in such a mess? Did they use the pandemic to worm their way into doing all these illegal things against the United States? I mean, there's so many questions that hasn't even been answered yet. And we want to know. We want to know who is back of this. What rats are under the table? You know? Well, people... This is my last video for the night. God bless you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And I'll be back later on today with more videos. And the last thing I say is you are a blessing. <laughs>